Okay. So, apparently the computer says that I'm live, but I think I was trying to get live for quite a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you hear funny stuff, uh, know that, um, yeah, I was just trying to go live. But, uh, hello everyone and welcome to my live stream. Uh, this is uh, an awesome evening and I'm going to put my mouse down and then I'm just going to assume that everybody can hear me and everything is okay. Uh, please let me know if actually you can hear me good and oh, okay hi by the way I see that Marlena is already there and Johan is already there so welcome <laughs> welcome everybody so uh, today we're going to have some fun uh, doing some fruit yeah is it is it okay is a pomegranate a fruit or not or are they seeds or what are they I don't know there's something. <laughs> There's something, right? Um, so I just did. I just did some pomegranates here. Uh, this was from last uh, live stream, right? Because on the last live stream, we just went uh, went ahead at the end, and I did a bunch of different designs, and one of them was this one with the pomegranate, and. Um, I had the I had them open and then this is a kind of a melon kind of thing and I actually wanted to try out to see how it looks like it's like a, gonna be a yellow melon and these flowers are kind of like uh, look a little bit like mel melon flowers uh, it depends also what melon you're going to go and see but you know I assume that they're melon flowers <laughs> and <laughs> and so on and I just want to do them with uh, really like uh, some soft pinks um, and for that I think I need to get my other palette anyway we'll do it with some really soft pinks and yellows okay these flowers and then the leaves are just normal leaves um, no problem there okay and why did I want to do this because I don't normally use um I don't normally do fruits, right? So I was just thought, oh, I'll I'll get into it. And this one had an interesting shape. And also, I get to play around with my really cool palette here. So uh, I'm gonna use a lot of alizarin crimson, to be honest, for this one, and also perlin maroon. And we're gonna get into it, and it's gonna be quite some interesting. Uh, interesting coloring right so i'm just gonna add the color of this one and i'm gonna mix it with some purple okay but the pomegranate uh, it's gonna be red right it's it's the reddest red that you can have and not everything is gonna be red, right? Like I'm gonna make sure that only the only the closest to to the outer shell that you get this kind of red stuff, and then we're gonna deepen it out with um, the perlin maroon. But you know, this is where. We do this and then we're going to add some purples and we're going to add the perlin maroon. It's going to be fun. And now I'm realizing that maybe one exercise that I should do is how do I paint around the round shape? Because I seem to not be doing very good ever so slightly. It's okay because everything will be red anyway in the end. except very small parts so it's okay if I'm going around it and here is where the ends are and this is where we're gonna mix it up with some really dark um, let's try some dark olive by the way I'm using my super granulating set not because I'm going to see any super granulation here, <laughs> but simply because uh, it it holds currently my nicest 
red color, which is this Orison Crimson. So that's why I'm using this one. So I'm going a little bit over the lines, but that's okay. I'm not gonna fret about it too much. It's gonna be a little bit more looser, looser style than what you guys are used for me. Um, I'm gonna see how that goes. Trying, trying new things, right? So, how is this pomegranate actually happening? So, everything happens inside a circle. At least, like, if you're thinking about it, like. like this and then it has lots of these seeds and the seeds are pretty nice and then it has these leaves on top and this is where I'm gonna come and I'm going to mix it up with some purple and this is the tundra rose that I'm mixing it up with oh oh my goodness what did I do <laughs> I messed things up you guys cannot see but i put too much water and then i even got color oh hello oh camila <laughs> i got uh water also on my nose with watercolor so i shouldn't have done that but anyway doesn't matter we're gonna add some of the purple here i mean in theory pomegranate should be easy to watercolor and to draw and then we're gonna do the green. So mixing lots of colors and I'm mixing on the paper itself, okay? This is something that I do. I like to do quite a lot of mixing on the paper. I don't like to mix my colors outside. I mean, it makes no sense to mix the colors outside of the paper. At least not for me. And I really like that one. Okay. Seems to me that the green kind of muted all these colors and I'm going to come with even more purple all around. Okay. Pomegranate is in the class of berries. Really, Johan? Is it the berries? Really? <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was not expecting it to be in the class of the berries. Uh, but okay, because it has true, in, in truth, truth be told, it does have a lot of, in theory, seeds inside, berries, you know? in theory so I could understand why it is in the glass of berries right I could see why okay Somehow I'm not very happy with this brush. Maybe I needed a new. I'm not sure. I I I threw away one of these brushes, one of these Excoda Versatis brush. But maybe I threw away the the old one. I'm just not really feeling it right now. So. I'm just going to switch brushes for some reason. I'm not feeling the brush right now. It could be that by mistake, I got rid of the wrong brush, uh, which was the new one instead of the old one. It could be. Okay. In theory, I should have done a little bit more white. But maybe I can fix that with a little bit of gouache. Okay. 
I'm gonna put some little bit of white gouache in here on my uh, little palette. I don't need a lot, just need a little bit. By the way, this is Windsor and Newton designer gouache. It's okay, it's good. It's not like the perfect gouache or anything, but it's good. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of white here and there and see how I can spread it. I don't wanna add too much. But also it will look better because I don't have the pink at my disposal close by. So I'm just, if I add gouache on top of this red, you know, it'll be okay because it will mix up with the red of the watercolor. And then it's gonna make it more like pinkish. So then, you know, we don't do the full stuff there okay so this is how i could salvage it yes that's that's perfect i'm gonna use a little bit more of this here and here And I'm just blending it out with just clean water. I'm not doing anything fancy, just blending things out. Okay. Yep. And um, I guess at the end I'm going to just use the black pen and I'm going to redo the lines here, but that's okay. For now, it, it's okay. Um, I guess I should just let some things... ...dry out. So, I would like this one to be yellow and this one to be more yellowish. So, I'm going to just go into the yellow before I do the inside, because I want to let the margins dry out. But before that, I would like these ones to be yellow, and then I'm going to add a slight bit of red, so we make it more orangey. Okay. And why am I doing yellow stuff? Is because if you would do it with the pink, even if it's pink, it's gonna lose itself the flower on on the pomegranate, right? So you don't want that. That's why I'm I'm choosing yellow, and I'm very careful because I really want to go around this nice stamen. I don't wanna. I want to leave them white, so I'm using really the tip of my brush to go around it. So that's why it's nice. These round brushes with a very pointy tip, they're really the perfect brushes for these kind of things. Because you can go and you can go around anything and anybody. Okay, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit with just a smidge of the alizarin crimson in certain areas. And then I'm gonna come with clean water and brush it all away. Like I said, I don't wanna make it too orangey. And then we're gonna come. Once it's dry, we're gonna come with the uh, Quinacridone Gold Hue. I'm gonna do that one. But for now, I just added slightly smidgen of red and I'm spreading it around maybe I should have hurried a little bit <laughs> it did dry out right but it's okay I only needed a little bit of the red 
I'm just taking it on the tip of my brush and that's it I'm gonna deepen these colors and make them really nice and then I'm going to do the other flower this one also with the yellow by the way the yellow the first yellow that I'm using is nickel azo yellow and then um, those are that is a really nice yellow let's put it this way it looks a little bit like I mean it is very close to cadmium yellow from Daniel Smith the only difference is it's transparent and cadmium yellow it's not transparent so it would have had a really big issue <laughs> especially with the black lines that I did I, I like my colors to be a bit more transparent uh, because otherwise I have to do a lot of work afterwards to repair stuff like here I will need to repair the lines and, and do a lot of things so that's why I like them to be a little slightly bit more transparent okay <laughs> like I said, I'm going to deepen some colors later on. And then the other ones, uh, let me see, do I take my pink or not? Yeah, okay, let me just bring my pink. Where is my pink? Let me see if this is the one. Yeah, this one has the pink. I don't have the shell pink on this one. I do have the opera rose, so I'm gonna just use opera rose. Or not. No. We're not gonna use opera rose. We're gonna use my other palette. You know, people get a little bit crazy because I have way too many palettes <laughs> happening. Okay, this is my whole bind palette, and I wanted this shell pink to use. So I really like this palette as well. And I'm going to switch this one for a moment with this one. And I'm going to use this pink. It's a really nice pink. But, by the way, pinks. How do people get to pinks? The only way to get to pinks is to mix with white. That means any pink that you have, it's probably not transparent. Okay? So <laughs> you have to be careful <laughs> what you do and how you do it. That's why I really love pinks, but in tiny amounts. Well, not only pinks, but things like this Visteria or Lilac or any other color that's because of the transparency factor they're really nice colors but it's also very hard to get anything transparent out of them so i'm coming in with clean water and i'm just pulling the color notice that when i'm adding water it does become a little bit transparent so that's nice. I'm also picking up some more color with my brush because I don't want it to be too blocky, right? And just gonna make it super transparent. Okay, but I really like this shell pink. It's really nice, it's really awesome. 
pen. Uh, I think it fits very well with the pomegranate. Of course, I'm going to come with some different different colors and I'm going to deepen them. But yeah. Holbein also has a really nice color palette, I would say. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> It really depends what you like, but I would say Holbein has a nice palette. And I am a lot of times using it. And this is a permanent yellow. Uh, oh no, maybe I want some orange yellow. Permanent yellow orange. This is a nice one. Because this pink works well with some orange in it. I know what you might think. Why is orange? Is so that I can tie this flower with all the other flowers that I've done. Okay? So don't worry. It's nothing. Uh, okay. Maybe I put too much orange. <laughs> I need to come in and fix some of these issues. Put too much orange. But isn't it the, the pink with the orange, they really look nice together, to be honest. I think one of one of the nicest combinations. Let me just do a little bit more pink. In some areas, and don't worry, I'll I'll fix the I'll fix the lines later on because anyway, I mix them up too bad. This one looks really nice. I guess this pink with orange will make a really nice peach color. Like super nice. I'm gonna deepen the pinks in certain areas. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to do something similar to the other two, right? There's only two other flowers. But how is uh, how is everybody? <laughs> how are you guys feeling? And girls, it has been an interesting week, I would say, for me. I missed uh, one live stream on Wednesday, and mainly... And some people might go like, why did you miss the live stream? Mainly because I was way too tired. So when I want to draw or when I want to watercolor, I only do a good job when I'm rested. And when my mind is rested, and that's the only time when I'm actually doing a decent job. If I'm not rested then no matter how hard, even if I try flowers that I tried before, even if I, I tried, I try things that I've done before and all of that stuff, it just never works. <laughs> it's just such a weird thing for me. Like I really need to be, um, of clear mind to be able to create and then I just make a executive decision not to come alive and not to do anything actually I went to sleep and I think it's better because I would hate myself if I would come live in front of all of you and then um, you know not be at my best and not doing my best Right? Uh, I think that is true for everybody. 
So my biggest my biggest thing that I will ask everybody is if you're thinking if you're frustrated that things are not going well, if you're feeling like why isn't this piece going the way it should be, please consider sleeping. It will really help you, trust me. <laughs> ask me how I know. I tried it out a lot of times. So I know. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's just normal. I mean, we are all human. I think that is the... That is the takeaway here. We are all human and you cannot push yourself too much because then you break and then you're going to suffer even more because then people are going to ask you <laughs> all sorts of questions and then you're going to feel like you need to do it and you need to spend hours upon hours and and all of this just goes against you so my advice to you sleep sleep is the best medicine for everything this is the problem when you're working with Colors that are very much non-transparent. You're going to have to go afterwards and fix the lines. But I don't mind. Okay. I went over the lines here and what's happening is I'm trying to lift the color but if I'm just not doing anything other than putting water then all the colors around will just seep into it. So if you really want to lift some color then you need to blot it out with a piece of tissue paper and then that will work. Yep. Cool. And now, do I have? Yes, I do have here a color which is Jean Brilliant, probably. And this is a really, this is a melon, melony, melony or orange. And I'm gonna mix it up with some green. Because the melon, let me see what green should I use. I should use this one, the there, there, there. I mean, this is kind of a, this kind of a yellow melon, but, you know, it's also green. Okay, we're going to do a lot more, but once it's dry, okay, I'm going to add some more of this orangey color, left and right. I just don't want to stress it right now. Okay. 
and then we're gonna do this one with uh, darker green okay this is the melon sitting there underneath it all I don't know if I should do it with darker green or yeah darker green let's do it with darker green that's really nice the reason why I didn't do right away the fixing of the lines is it needs to dry and when it dries it dries really lighter so that's when I can actually see how much of a problem I've made by utilizing these colors okay so for now everything is okay uh, I'm going to switch back to the other palette and then we're gonna come back to this one I actually have two palettes here hopefully my kids are not waking up <laughs> because if my kids are waking up then that's gonna be interesting so then they're go gonna come and put their heads into the palette I'm doing similar what I did on this other one and then we're gonna pull the color down and being very careful how we <laughs> how we do things right like if I need it I have that nice white there maybe I should already look I already did it better here because I just went with some water make it very fuzzy and then I'm just gonna let that white there I don't need I don't need the um, gouache okay so I'm fixing these lines here because I want them fixed okay and I'm using my rotary pen to do it I'm just going over some lines not all of them just a few just to emphasize certain things. And by the way, this is a uh, zero five. It's quite thick, but it is a really nice pen. The rotrings are always really nice. <laughs> I remember my mom used to have rotrings. My mom used to be what we call a technical technical drawer. And I'm gonna use a micron. And usually, technical drawers. I mean, she does technical drawings, so she always had rot rings and she was always cleaning them. However, there were those more fancy rot rings that you could um, do the ink inside so you would put ink inside the rod ring and then uh, I keep trying to figure out a pen that is not so thick I don't know I guess this is who I'm like if my mom would comment on me now she would know that I'm following in her footsteps right <laughs> theoretically theoretically I'm following in my mom's footsteps because she that's what she d she did all her life she was drawing all her life right okay maybe not flowers and so on but she was drawing all her life <laughs> So that was the nicest part. Uh, 
I am considering whether I should move this live stream uh, from Sunday evening to maybe Friday evening. I'm uh, just considering this. That is because I'm realizing also that, man, sun Sunday evening, a lot of people actually have... It's just the night before the week starts and they probably you probably have lots of stuff to do and you need to rest and all that. So I was just thinking that maybe the live stream should be on a Friday. And then That will be at least during the week, so more people could join. I will do the leaves up. And if more people can join, then that's going to be fun. Right? Okay. And now I'm adding the purple everywhere. Well, everywhere. You'll be surprised the amount of purple in it. So that it looks nice. And I'm going to add some more purple here. I know it needs quite some more purple. Uh oh, one of my cats woke up, <laughs> did woke up, so she might be deciding to join us for the live stream, and that's okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not yet at the stage where I want to, I want to do the insides of the pomegranate. <laughs> Right, I'm at the stage where I just want to deepen the flowers, make them pretty, make them nice. And here I'm going with some uh, Conacridome gold hue. And I'm going to go here also with some Conacridome gold hue. Oh, this is such a nice one. Yep. And then I'm going to pull stuff out. I'm trying to use as dry a brush as possible. I don't want to add too much water to all of this. So... Okay, what is interesting is the green went a little bit too much in this one. And then I'm going to pick up some of the pink and fixing up some of this one. I was thinking maybe I need a little bit more darker pink. There is also some darker pink, right, in the set from Holbein. Holbein is very big on pinks and stuff like that. So it will have much more darker pinks as well. Nice. Okay. I wonder which darker green I should use. I should use maybe the olive green for the melon. Yeah, 
It looks cool. And now we're gonna make sure that we do the pomegranate. So I'm going to wanna have different layers of different stuff. So I'm gonna start with this Berlin red. In between, I'm going to do my my red is red, right? So and afterwards I'm gonna add the white dots. And you might think, what? Like, don't worry, it will all make sense soon. Okay. And now some alizarin crimson. It will dry out differently, don't worry. And you will see what I mean. And I'm going to add some more purple in some areas. I this is why I said that if you do the the pink there is going to lose itself. So I I saw somebody draw I mean watercolor this and they were leaving some of these white spots there and I'm like yeah I'm not going to have that patience. I'm just gonna add it like afterwards. This Berlin red is actually turns out to be also pretty much not as transparent as you would hoped mm. because it's always a mix of two colors. So this is my first layer. Then we're gonna go and do extra layers and so on and you're gonna see how it just comes along okay and i'm gonna do the other one the same and then we're gonna take care of the leaves and then come back to the pomegranate because we were gonna have to let it dry And when it's gonna dry, it's gonna dry really different color, um, much lighter. At least this is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> and then I'm going to add the highlights with the gouache later on. And this is how we are doing things here. Okay. Okay, this Berlin red is really pretty. And then alizarin crimson. And the rest. Alizarin crimson to the rescue. I'm very careful around these flowers because I don't want to mess it up. Okay. And that is really nice. And just gonna wait for it to dry out. That's it. Gonna wait for it to dry out. Then we're gonna go really deep in between 
and then we're gonna add the highlights and then that's gonna be it so you know a easy way of doing pomegranates and uh, maybe around here with some more white highlights okay already already so I'm going to have some of these leaves with this nice color this is a nice olive but it's not the darkest olive I have so when I'm gonna come now with the with the water it's gonna go really nice I'm gonna go with water here and I'm gonna spread the color around Okay. I'm trying not to touch where it is wet because then I'm going to just pull that color everywhere. And I don't want that. Okay. Um I'm not going to make all the leaves like that because some leaves I'm going to add them with uh, more uh, with the forest green which is gonna be super nice okay And then these ones also. Maybe I'll do a second layer on the melon. And now the forest green. I you saw that I only took color one time and then I could do all the leaves with that color it really didn't matter that much so these brushes that I have they hold a lot of water and they hold also lots of color, so you can do a lot of things with them. I'm just gonna do this one here. Now, let me think, maybe this one will be a slightly darker olive, it's not darker but it's more like yellowish olive than grayish olive, right, and then I'm going to take some yellow to add it in here, it's a nice one, nice color. You might wonder what I'm going to do with the leaves. I'm going to do them with purple and blue. You might wonder why. Just because I wanted to break the monotony 
of what we do here. Uh oh, <laughs> too much water. And when I say break the monotony, I mean it. Break the monotony. Like all these colors are kind of warm colors. And what I want is to also have some cool colors in between. Because otherwise it's too warm, the entire composition. And I don't think we will want that. And maybe these purples are not the warmest colors in the world and this but um at least it's a little bit of you're going away from what the normal center of colors is this is what called i call it powder blue but they call it galaxy blue and i'm like ooh galaxy blue uh, but I call it just powder blue, but I'm going to deepen the color with the other blue, with the tundra blue. That's going to be nice. It's going to be darker and more moody. Okay, this looks really nice, I'm really proud of how this turns out. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this thunder blue and I use it to deepen some of the colors. This time I'm hoping that the pomegranate have dried out, but I am just for surety, I'm just gonna zap it. And maybe all of these leaves, I wanna add some yellow in them, just to make them a little bit more closer to what the flowers are. Not too much, but smidge of yellow. And we're doing glazing here, meaning I'm going with a brush on top of another color, adding yet, you know, a different different type of color. And that's fine. It's really gonna lift the piece up a little bit. nice nice combinations and then so on I'm thinking this one needs a little bit of second coat yep All right and then this one for some reason does want to get too dark but I wanted it to get dark this one also, I want it to get darker. Okay, then I'm gonna zap it with a heat tool. What do you guys think so far? <laughs> Is it nice or not nice?
Okay. Now it's actually dry. So now I can actually go in and do the inside of this. And I'm going to use the Berlin Maroon because it's much darker red. So let's see if we if we can do it the way I was thinking we're going to do it, okay? So I really need the pointy tip. So. I really am going to go in between here and really make it darker. Not everywhere is going to be because some places mm, the seeds are next to each other. But everywhere else we're just going to make it darker. You know? And it might not be exactly like a pomegranate. Can you imagine that I actually... I've never bought one. I bought the separate seeds, the, the berries inside. I bought them separate. But the actual fruit, I never bought. <laughs> and maybe just because I've seen it in pictures, it was always intriguing me. But I never bought one. And maybe I should have watched it a little bit more, but it's okay. I'm just gonna go with white and do some really cool stuff. Okay. And here maybe, yeah. I have no idea how this is going to dry out. I'm just hoping that it's going to dry out good as I think it will. But I might be wrong. I am concentrating a lot here. Because to be honest, this is very hard to go in between these round shapes. It's always going to be hard. Okay, this I have a little bit more open area, so I can do it, and maybe I can also come with a darker purple. Yep, this is the purple. I feel like the darker purple and the Berlin maroon pretty much the same. I'm not really sure what we're gaining by it, but let's see. Maybe in here. Oh, you can see it actually better in here. Because also the the berries are more purple, then I can see it better. If you do it on top of red, it's a bit not noticeable. And then it has the same color. Okay. I don't want to do everything, actually. Now that I'm thinking of, I want to leave some things a bit not so dark. And once it's dry, I'm going to add some white lines here and there and 
everything gonna have a white dot on it okay but it already looks much nicer right it already looks like 3d a little bit so let's go on and do this one Wow, I'm really concentrating here. <laughs> My mind is completely blank. This will be the perfect exercise for relaxing and, uh, you know, like a relaxing session of painting. I do believe that this is the perfect relaxing section on painting. So in a way, it's a little bit like negative painting, what I'm doing here. If you don't know what your negative painting is, you're basically um, painting around shapes and deepening the color and making other shapes. And this is just to convey the fact that some of these shapes are 3D. So basically, what we're doing is a little bit of negative painting, because I'm painting around the shapes yep. mm -hmm. okay that's uh, deeper but not completely red because I'm gonna do completely red somewhere here it needs to have a small bit of variation okay Okay, and then maybe here I'll add some darker color, really here, closer to this flower. Okay. I'm going to have to dry it out. probably not anatomically correct or anything my pomegranate because I have a feeling they have a lot more white <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay uh, we're not gonna bother on that I'm gonna take my white gel pen first of all I'm going to start it off on my finger this is how I start it off on my finger and then I'm going to do this thing on anyway white because they were supposed to stay white but somehow I went over the lines and then we're gonna go and do the pomegranate and that's gonna really lift it up this one I like the most on this side but yeah this is what I'm going to do oh thank you Marlena for the nice words Okay. Maybe I need a new white job pen. 
<laughs> I'm not sure if I'm okay. Probably I need a white job and okay. I'm going around some and then on um, some of them I'm just adding Okay, there. And here. And adding some more dots. Not only dots, but sometimes lines. dots And I'm very much concentrating here because I also don't want to do it too much in a way. Okay. Not all of them have the thing, but some do. Okay, that was okay. Now it kind of pops up right <laughs> let's do the same here right and next time i'm really going to switch my white gel pen with a new one i think it's also almost over Okay, just adding these details really makes or breaks a piece, right? So don't be afraid, don't be afraid to add details like this, right? And I know some of the people say, oh, well, that's not really watercolor. You should have left your whites and you should have learned to leave the white of the paper. And I'm like, who's, who's going to know? <laughs> who's going to know, man? Nobody's going to know. I just... I just think that whatever makes your life easier, you should try it, to be honest. I really like this melon with the green and the yellow. It's really fun. Okay, I think 
I am almost done with this. I might want to deepen some of the leaves a little bit more even than I've already done. Like with some more blue and so on. But in general I am done and I'm quite pleased with what I've done so far. It looks really nice to be honest. And I like the contrast between the yellow and the pink and the really dark red here. And then this pop of blue is just makes your day, man. Because it feels like um, it just takes you out of the old old red, right? Together with the yellow. It, it's a really nice combination, I would say. Yeah. Um yeah, that's kind of it. I think I think I'm really super happy with this. Um everything is done as I wanted it and they really look nice. Thank you so much everybody for joining. I know that this is pretty hard on a on a Sunday afternoon, but if you stayed with me till the end, um give it a try. This is a good exercise for the negative painting. This is a really good exercise. And then it kind of teaches you how to how to do it, what to do. Uh, and then just to go around some shapes and, you know, uh, make it more 3D. So uh, give it a go. In the meantime, see you guys next time on the next live stream. And then just stay tuned for more uh, cute content. Yeah. See you.